Hello! So you wanna go ampless? That's cool. I'm gonna show you how I do it. So I'm gonna talk about pedal boards and cab and preamp simulators. We're gonna talk about the pros and cons of this and then I'm gonna show you my pedal board and how I approach this. Let's start with the pros. Well, the obvious benefit is that you don't have to carry an actual amp. I was quite sick of that and I don't have a car. So the mobility thing is a great plus. And even when I had an amp back in the day, I wasn't always pleased with how the technician would microphone my amp. Which brings me to number two. Whether it's live or I'm in the studio, I always do have the exact same sound. And to me that's the best part. Now for the cons. If you are a tube enthusiast, you probably won't be too pleased with simulation pedals. They are just not gonna sound the same and that is because they are not the same. Although I do have to mention that there is pedal preamps that do have a tube in it. Second thing, the more pedals you're having, the more noise you're gonna have. That's just how it is. It's a lot of electricity going on and there's always gonna be some buzzing, humming, just some ground noise. But I would argue that if you have an actual amp and you crank it up, especially the gain, it's gonna make a hell of noise as well. Also, there's things you can do to avoid background noise. Get a good power supply with isolated outputs. Don't have an instrument cable that is like 20 meters long. Place the power supply away from your board. And also there's always the usage of a noise gate pedal. So a pedal that will just choke every signal when you're not playing. So here's what my pedal board looks like. Just for general overview, I do have a maximizer, a compressor. This one is my amp simulation, noise gate, acoustic preamp, huh? We're gonna talk about that later and a delay pedal. So this is my approach. Now let's get into the details and I'm gonna explain every pedal that I have and why I use it. So this is it and this is how it sounds like. <laughs> Now I'm gonna turn everything off. Actually this one stays on, but now it's in the clean channel. Okay, so it goes from here to here. And the first one, this is mostly like an EQ boost for the lower and for the higher frequencies. And I like to have it in the front and uh, crank up the highs to have more attack, especially when hitting single notes. So without. So it functions like a soft overdrive already. After that, I have the compressor. You know what a compressor does. It cuts off parts that are louder and elevates everything that is more quiet. Especially high notes, at least with my guitar, they do have less sustain and they are more quiet. So I like to have this one. This one and every distortion pedal um, are the ones that produce the most noise. Which makes sense because it makes everything that is quiet louder. So it also affects the noise level. Now this, this is my preamp and cap simulation. So this is where the magic happens. I like this little fella a lot because it's quite small, leaves a lot of space. I have two channels, I can switch it to clean. And the distorted channel. <laughs> This is what it sounds like without the compression and without the EQ boost. I like the sound of it and this is supposed to be like, like a, the brown sound. There's plenty of other MOA micro preamps and each of those pedals represent one type of amp. So it's a preamp and it has a cap simulation. This one's quite cheap, about 90 bucks. So if you're on a budget, I'd really recommend to get one of these. And you might already hear that there is some ground noise going on. Here's the ground noise without the compression. And when I go back to the clean channel, it's pretty much gone, right? So this is why I have the noise gate pedal right here. And it's gone. And this is the reason why I placed the noise gate pedal after the distortion and after the compressor. Gonna turn it off again. Hear that? 
Okay, nice. Now what the heck is the acoustic preamp doing here? The thing is that I use some of these pedals with my acoustic guitar as well. And while playing around a little I found out that this one here is actually quite useful when it comes to my electric guitar sound. And that's for two reasons. It has like a... It has a scoop and it works like a, a multi-compressor to filter out some boominess. I can choose the frequency and filter the lower frequencies that I don't like. And this one right here is like a peak EQ. And I like to raise that a little as well. And because this one by its own sounds a little like digital, I like to dial up the ambience knob right here. Some other uh, amp simulators already have those built in. And then it's called room or space, whatever. This is somehow the same. So it sounds more like having an actual amp in a room. When I open this up, you can hear it very clear. And this is how I like to have it. So I'm gonna switch it off and then turn it on again. Well, somehow my camera stopped recording. But the only thing that's left to mention is my delay pedal. It's the TC Electronic Flashback. And what's cool about this is that it has a stereo output, especially useful for the ping pong delay. So it really broadens your guitar signal. And that's it. Of course, this setup is just what I personally like fitting the music I like to play. I hope this was somehow useful to you and I want to end the video with a short live sequence of my band where I actually use my pedal board with a similar setup. Hope to see you soon, thanks for watching.